Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Everybody Bible Study, the Bible study for everybody. Before we get into our lesson on today, let's go ahead and have some prayer. Lord God, I just want to thank you for another day. I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Um, God, I just pray that you continue to fill our hearts and our minds with your word. I pray, Lord God, that you would lend us your wisdom, that we may understand and comprehend the things that you're trying to speak to us on tonight, God. Um, Lord, I also pray for um, any of these, any of those persons that truly need to hear a word from you, um, who need some clarity or direction, Lord God. I just pray that uh, you would use this lesson to do that. And I also pray, Lord God, that you would use me as you see fit, Lord, um, that you would allow Holy Spirit to just take over on tonight and um, help me to teach this in a way that gives glory unto you, um, but it can also be understood by those who are listening. In Jesus' name I pray, thank God, and amen. Okay. Ooh, so, uh, I'm just going to be honest, right? We will have a third part right, of this review. Um, for now, the second part is not do too much, but I really have to go back over the third part of our review because um, for those who have been following along with us, right, um, that third part, we're going to be looking at Galatians 3, uh, verses 20 through 24, really verses 20 through 22, and then we have to finish up with 20, uh, 23 and 24, but, um, you know, we took a whole detour the Romans, so um, yeah, I have to sort all that out. So that's going to be a minute. Um, so in the meantime, while I am still restructuring them and you know condensing everything, we're just going to have our second part of our review, like I said, and this time we will be looking at uh, Galatians three, verses seventeen through nineteen. So let's go there. Galatians chapter 3. Excuse me. Galatians chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Now, for those who, you know, maybe just this is your first day <laughs> uh, joining in, first time joining in with us, we have been doing lessons from a book called Priority Time, Addicted to God's Word by Chris Conley. We're in the last section of the book, which is uh, the Devo section where we apply everything we learn. We're on day nine. Ooh, excuse me. And right now, we're currently taking time to go through the scriptures on spiritual growth. So we've talked about spiritual babes. Right now, we're reviewing through uh, the second phase, which is little children, okay, what does it mean to spiritually be a little child? So, we, like I've mentioned before, right, we've covered our intro into Galatians, right, what they were dealing with, what kind of things, you know, are we going to see, right, because it's important to know the background so that as you're reading the epistles, so it's like, ah, yes, to that. You get a clear understanding of why it is that certain things are, are being addressed, right? So now, okay, looking back, as I said, we're going to, you know, Galatians 3, 17 through 19, and let's, let's go ahead and read it. I was about to jump on in. Well, let's go ahead and read that. And this time, I will read from uh, both translations. So we've been looking at these verses through the Amplified and the CJB. So just, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do that now. Okay. So again, Galatians 3. I guess you have by now. 
Galatians 3, verses 17 through 19, starting with the Amplified first. This is what I mean. The law, which came into existence 430 years later, after the covenant concerning the coming Messiah, does not and cannot invalidate the covenant previously established by God, so as to abolish the promise. For if the inheritance of what was promised is based on observing the law, as these false teachers claim, it is no longer based on a promise. However, God granted it to Abraham as a gift by virtue of his promise. Why then the law? What was its purpose? It was added after the promise to Abraham to reveal to people their guilt because of transgressions. That is, to make people conscious of the sinfulness of sin and the law was ordained through angels and delivered to Israel by the hand of a mediator, Moses, the mediator between God and Israel, to be in effect until the seed whom would come to whom the promise had been made. That is Galatians chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, amplified. Now in the CJB or Complete Jewish Bible. Here is what I am saying. The legal part of the Torah, which came into being 430 years later, does not nullify an oath sworn by God so as to abolish the promise. For if the inheritance comes from the legal part of the Torah, it no longer comes from a promise, but God gave it to Abram through a promise. So then, why the legal part of the Torah? It was added in order to create transgressions until the coming of the seed about whom the promise had been made. Moreover, it was handed down through angels and a mediator. And as Galatians chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, EJB. So, we've already kind of touched on that, right? We've talked about um, the promise, <laughs> you know, that was made um, to Abraham, because that's what Paul, at least in verse 15 and 16, right, that's what he starts us with. He refers them constantly, refers the relations back to what does the word say, <laughs> right, which is what we should be doing now. What does the word say? Okay. So first thing, right, that we note here, the law comes 430 years after the promise. Okay, we're just saying something, right? Because remember, God promises Abraham, right, that uh, the children of Israel, his descendants, are going to go through 400 years of oppression or slavery. And then, right, you know, after that, he's going to bring them to the land, right, that he has promised, you know, to Abraham's descendants. Okay? So we talked about that. We talked about the, the self-curse, how God took on the curse of the covenant of this promise that he makes with Abraham, right? That if we don't do our part, it's on him. <laughs> and praise God for that. It's, it's not on us, right? Now, then, well, we'll get to that again, but a little later. I was about to jump ahead, but we'll, we'll stop there, right? So law comes 430 years after, right? So that means 30 years after all of this, you gave children are free. Now here comes the Torah, right, or the law, okay? And so Paul is stressing that the Torah doesn't negate the promise, that the purpose of the Torah is to show our sinful nature and desperate need for God. Again, we've talked about this over and over again, right? We talked about that, you know, last week looking over our review then, right, how the Bible shows us everything that we are not, how we fail in every single way, possibly points out our sin, right? But at the same time, it's the good news, right, because it's like be thankful that your salvation is not dependent upon works. Like be very grateful for that. Because it's like, at the end of the day, you always are going to need God. You're always going to need Jesus. 
always. Like there will never come a day where you will not need him. And it's like, and praise God that we have a Savior who's there to carry us and who puts through life, right? So we don't have to do this stuff alone, okay? And so you know, going back to my notes here, right, over and over again, we are reminded salvation based on anything, anything apart from Christ is dangerous. It's about what Christ has done. We are not saved by our works. So I just want to read it. It popped up in my mind, right? Ephesians 2, I believe it's verses 8 and 9. Okay, I think we read that last time, but we're going to read it again. Okay. And so, again, this is in the Amplified. Uh, Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. For it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Christ, that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved, gracious gift of God, not as a result of your works, nor your attempts to keep the law, so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his salvation. And as Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, Amplified Version. So, again, it's like, first of all, that's just the nature of who we are as people. <laughs> right? We love to take credit for things that God is doing. But it's like, that had nothing to do with you. Like, all all this week, even today, God has been constantly having to remind me, right, as I'm waiting to, like, hear back, <laughs> get some good news, hopefully, about this interview. But even in that, I'm like, well, God, I really want it. I really want And it's like, if you want this thing more than you want me, that is a problem, Right? If you, if it's like, okay, seek the kingdom, seek first, seek God, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things should be added unto you. It's like, but you keep seeking the added unto you part. You want the things that are going to be added unto you. It's like, and that's not why you're supposed to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first because in doing that, it's like, oh, the things are just things. Right? This is actually what my heart should desire more than the things, right? And so that constant reminder, like, like, oh, okay, well, maybe if, you know, hopefully this will happen. And it's like, it has nothing to do with you. It ain't got nothing to do with this, that, and the other. (laughs) It's like, yeah, those things help because we do have to put forth some kind of effort. But again, at the end of the day, it's like God is the one who opens doors. He's also the one who closes them. Like you have, that's not something that's on you, right? And he has to do, do it in such a way to where you can't possibly take credit for it. Like where you have to look at that thing and be like, it was nobody but God that made that happen. <laughs> you know? And so in the case of our salvation, it's like, can you imagine like, at the same time, you know, some of, the, some of us are there, right, where it's like, oh, well, I do this and this and this and this, so I know I'm safe. Are you sure? Because the Pharisees and Pharisees thought they were safe, too. They thought they, thought they were safe, too. So we're going to keep hearing this theme over and over and over again, constantly in this letter. Because, again, remember what they were dealing with. They're dealing with people who are telling them that you believing in Jesus is not enough, that you need to, in order for you to be really saved, you need to do X, Y, Z, and if you're not doing X, Y, Z, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, you know, then you're not, you're not saved enough. And it's like, hmm. so, again, if our salvation is based on self, we're doomed. Again, that is dangerous thinking. 
you know, having having been there, right? Uh, I still remember the time the, the Lord told me for a few years, like you are, you have made yourself God in your own heart. Like you, you say you love me, but you actually desire to be your own God. That's dangerous, right? Because like you, you believe in me, right? And you go through the motions or, or whatever, but at the end of the day, you serve yourself. And you live by what you think is right. You, know, you interpret the word how you think it to be right, which you think is saying, but you're not actually seeking me and waiting on revelation from Holy Spirit to know what it is that I'm actually saying to you. Again, this is what the Pharisees and Sadducees did. They took the word of God, and they interpreted how they felt like it should be interpreted. Here comes Jesus. He is the word, right? Like, mm, y'all are way off, so let me show you how it actually is supposed, what that actually means, how it's actually supposed to be done, and you still reject him. Like, y'all, I literally was studying something today, and the funny thing is I had no intention of, like, there's some commentary related to something that I was um, studying on. But, you know, you hear that little voice that's like, read that. And at first it was kind of long. I'm like, okay, you know. But then as I kept reading, I'm like, ooh, ouch, ow. It's starting to cut up. It's like, oh, okay. Like, these people really thought they had it, and they didn't. And for you to blatantly, hmm, (laughs) it's taking a turn. Um, For you to blatantly deny, to deny Christ like that, Like, we, yeah, we look at the Pharisees and Sadducees. We look at those people, the scribes or whoever, and it's like, man, he's sitting there right there in front of you and you denying him. But it's like, don't you also know that if you are reading his word and studying his word, if you're going to these Bible, you know, Bible studies or even coming to these for, for that matter, we're learning these things and studying these things together and you are still living against you're still going against what the word is saying. You're still trying to live by your own works. It's like, don't you understand that you are also denying them too? Because again, if you, we talked about this last week, right? If you are trying to do things according to, to your list of do's and don'ts, how long your skirt is or, you know, I don't know, how sharp your suit looks. <laughs> you know, how many hours you volunteer a week. And sometimes, you know, you got some people that don't even want to volunteer. You know, like how many hours they pray in a day. Like, if that is your measurement of salvation, is ba- is based on what you do, And you are basically saying that Christ's work on the cross was not enough. A perfect work that was done on the cross is not enough. So it's like, yeah, even in that, you're you're denying him, right? Holy Spirit call you out on your sin, which again, we're going to get there when we get to part three. Why it is that we're in prison, right? We talked about that, why we're in prison under the law. It's like if Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is there to, to, you know, to remind us of things that God has taught us, that Jesus has taught us through his word, right? But then also to be that indicator like, hey, 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 this is displeasing to God. And if you just deny that, that also, in a way, like, do you understand, like, you are steps away from blaspheming the Holy Spirit? 
is you have to really deny the power and authority of who God is to just blatantly go out of your way to do things like that. But, hey, back to this review. Okay. Back to this review. Okay. So, again, if my salvation is based on my faith in Jesus Christ, there is always hope, even when I fall short. There's always hope. Okay. Now, for this, we have some references. So the first one is in Romans. For this one, guys, I'm actually going to read from my, my King James. I hope you all don't mind. <laughs> okay. Um, but Romans chapter 4. Go there. And then I hear the little voice. So I'm going to read from King James and then compare with the Amplified. Okay. Romans chapter 4, verses 13 through 16. And again, this is King James first. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So we have to pause there already. We have to pause there. What did Paul say? Look, I'm already getting it ready in my, my other Bible. What did Paul say? For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to enter into his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now, let's compare that in the Amplified. Again, this is Romans 4 and 13. For the promise to Abraham and to his descendants that he would be the heir of the world was not through observing the requirements of the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Faith. We have talked about this word, faith, right? It is not something that comes from you. It is something that is given to you by God, and only God can increase it. And guess how he increases it? Through your obedience. So this is not, this is not something, you, man, I got I to gotta increase my faith. Like, no, that don't come from you. I got to have faith. What does that mean to have faith? It's kind of funny because in a way it's like you're basically saying every time I got to have faith, I need to be obedient. I need to obey. I got to obey God. I need to I have I need to have more faith. I need to have more obedience. Anyway. So look at 14. Uh 14 and 15. For if they which are of the law be heirs, Faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect, because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Now, again, we're going to compare, right, with the Amplified. Again, this is Romans 4, 14 15. If those who are followers of the law are the true heirs of Abraham, then faith leading to salvation is no effect and void, and the promise of God is nullified. For the law results in God's wrath against sin, but where there is no law, there is no violation of it either. Okay? So, you know, I'll be honest, Paul be writing stuff that you just got to, you're going to have to meditate on that one for a while. Right? <laughs> Especially the last part, I'm like, hmm. It's not that, you know, oh, well, if there's a law, no sin exists. No. It's not what he's saying, right? But let's, let's carefully go through that, right? Looking at the King James. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. 
there is a scripture. Let me see if I can find it. Right. Where it's talking about, I think it's in Hebrews, right? Talking about faith. And it's like, if I can see it, then why would I hope for it? Let's see. I'll look it up. Uh, oh, it's in Romans. Okay. Romans 8 and 25. And again, this is King James. But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. I'm sorry. I should have went up a little bit. Okay. So Romans 8, 24 and 25. Okay. King James. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doeth he yet hope for it? And then 25, but if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. Okay? Like that, that, that was like the first thing that came to mind. It's like, well, okay, then there's, there's no, if it's all about following some rules, like you said, then faith is, is void. Well, then there's no need for Christ, right? If it's all about do's and don'ts, and we have to be careful about that too because, yeah, there are plenty of good people who don't believe. There are plenty of good people who do, do not believe in your God, who do not serve your God, who don't believe in anything, right? Well, let me be clear on that. Who don't believe in any faith at all. And they do good things, which then kind of makes you, you know, like I said, and the promise made of none effect. Because, again, it's like, well, what was the point of the promise? <laughs> the father of many nations, not just, the, and we talked about that too, right? God is the God of all nations, regardless of who it is. It's like, well, we don't believe in Christianity here, well, that's too bad because he, baby, he is still the God of that nation. <laughs> he is the God of all nations. And when he says he wants people of every nation, he means that. Okay? Uh, again, oh, let me go back. So then looking at 15. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, trans, the promise made of it. So then 15, because the law worketh wrath. What is the punishment for sin? What are the wages of sin? We talked about that, right? The wages of sin. <laughs> How the Satan wants to absolutely compensate you for your work, for the time that you put in. We talked about that. For where in the law is there is no transgression, right? Or in the in the amplified for the law results in God's wrath against sin, but where there is no law, there is no violation of either, right? In other words, again, not saying like, oh, without this we would have no no. Without it, you don't even know if you're actually like I said, you can think that you're doing all the right things. I'm a good person. And then you start getting in that word, and it's like, are you a good person? Are you a good person according to God's standard? Look, we got to, okay. And then 16, again, this is King James first. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise, oh, I'm sorry, to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith, of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Because understand something. If Again, if that is the case, then all Gentiles, right, all non-Jews, like none of us, none of us would be the children of Abraham. It would just be him and his descendants, direct descendants. 
right? But because we have become his children through faith, that's a whole, now the whole thing has changed, right? So looking at it in uh, Amplified, Romans 4 and 16, therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith, that is, confident trust in the unseen God in order that it may be given as an act of grace, as unmerited favor and mercy, that the promise will be legally granted to all the descendants of Abraham, not only those, not only for those Jewish believers who keep the law, but also for those Gentile believers who share the faith of Abraham, who is the spiritual father of us all. Okay? So again, anybody can do good deeds. Anybody. But as believers, we serve God because we love him, right? And the scripture says, right, we love him because he uh, He first loved us. It's like he loved us first. If we came to love him because of that, we didn't even know who he was. Right? For a lot of us, y'all know my story, I, I wanted nothing to do with God in the church. But here we are. <laughs> Now, our second reference, okay, so that's our first reference, right, talking about the, the covenant, okay, why we can't be, uh, you know, relying on our works to save us. We're going to go to Exodus, and then we're going to make a little pit stop by Deuteronomy. <laughs> so first go to Exodus chapter 20, okay. Exodus 20, and we're going to look at verses 18 and 19. Exodus 20, verses 18 and 19. Okay. And again, uh, reading from King James first. Right. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpets and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they were moved and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Exodus chapter 20, verses 18 and 19, King James, now in the Amplified. Now all the people witnessed the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the smoking mountain. And as they looked, the people were afraid, and they trembled and moved backward and stood at a safe distance. Then they said to Moses, You speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Exodus chapter 20, verses 18 and 19, uh, Amplified Version. Hmm. Kind of sad, right? Uh, we're gonna, you know, touch on that. But essentially, it's like you know, they didn't really know God for themselves, and so it's like, ooh, if he, they were literally terrified of him. He talks to us, we'll die. So you just you be our mediator, right? We just read that he's a mediator. You be our mediator, and, you know, we'll just, we'll hang out over here. Some of us treat, ooh, I don't know why that's coming up, but here we are. Uh, Some of us still behave that way. Well, can you pray for me? Right? You go to the pastor and be like, Pastor, can you pray? Like, baby, did you pray for yourself? Like, again, it is good to have to pray for one another. Like, the Word does tell us to do that, to pray for one another. But it's like, you cannot be so afraid to approach the Lord on your own. Like, when are you going to pray for yourself? You know? 
I laugh when, you know, now it's like we go to eat or somewhere uh, with my family or whoever, and it's like everybody immediately looks to me to say grace. And it's not that, you know, I'm like, okay, yeah, just say grace. But at the same time, there are times where I'm like, you know, y'all, one of y'all can do it too because I'm, I don't have this special thing where it's just God only hears me. Like, y'all can pray, you know, y'all can pray for the food too. Like, he hear you too. <laughs> right? And so it's like there are a lot of us who move that way in our own spiritual life. Like, well, can you do it? Can you pray? You talk to God for me. You can talk to God right now. Like, why you you tell me go do it, but you can literally talk to him for yourself. I'm looking at our second reference in Deuteronomy. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 5. And we're going to read verses 4 and 5. Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. And again, we're going to read the the King James first and then the Amplified. So Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, King James. Uh, The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord. For ye were afraid by reason of the fire and went not up into the mount, saying, and then, you know, it was verse 6, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And we'll stop there because then he starts giving them the commandments again, right? Uh, looking at it in the Amplified. The Lord spoke with you face to face at the mountain from the midst of the fire. I was standing between the Lord and you at that time to declare to you the word of the Lord, for you were afraid because of the fire and did not go up the mountain. He said, verse 6, And the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. And so we're technically right this Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 4 through 6, but we specifically want to look at verses 4 and 5, right? So again, like I said, when you don't really know God for yourself, you don't know how loving and kind he is. You don't know that even when you have really messed up, he still wants you to come to him. Like he absolutely wants you to come to him because he's the only one who can make it right. He's the only one who can clean you up. You know, like, hmm. I remember in college, I had messed up so bad, like academically, just, you know, there was a lot of things going on, right? Um, My mental health was so bad. It was so bad. And I was in a place at that time where I was just ashamed um, I could not even own up to myself, like, hey, you need help. Um, just was not in a place to do that. Um, not really, I don't really, really use the excuse, but at the same time, it's like, yeah. <laughs> if you had gotten the help you need, probably could have, you know, done a lot better, right? But, you know, what's done is done, right? And so I just remember at that time, like, it was, I just hid it from my mom that every semester I was, you know, barely, like, I really was close to flunking out. I would nearly flunk out. And by the grace of God and people, you know, him touching people's hearts and allowing me to say, because I'm really looking back, I'm like, I probably should have been suspended at one point. But they kept letting me register. And finally got to a point where I could not, you know, this little secret came out. And, you know, it's funny how you are in a state or you're in a place and you don't even think about it anymore. You don't even realize how deep you're in. I completely forgot, you know. And so she's coming to people like, hey, what's going on? You know, because it was an issue with my financial aid. 
in respect to my grades or whatever. And so she's like, what, you know, what's going on here? And so they're like, well, we see where she started strong. <laughs> but all that stuff came out, right? And so she came to me, and it's like she was really upset, right? You know, because it's like, what are you doing? Like, what have you been doing all the time? Are you even going to class? Like, what is, what's going on? But at the same time, it was also like, why didn't you just come to me? Why didn't you just come to me? If you, you know, we could have talked about this. If you needed a break, that would have been fine. But what you're doing right now is unacceptable, like, right? And it's the same thing with God. He still has a standard. And there's certain things that we do, especially, you know, in regards to sin, that's like, this is unacceptable, but I still love you. Why don't you just come to me and talk to me so I can help? You know, if you had come to me sooner, we could have fixed this, resolved this a long time ago. But you didn't have to struggle like this for so long if you had just come to me sooner. So, again, when you don't really know God for yourself or you feel like, oh, you know, I'm I'm too ashamed to come to him and it, like, he wants you to come to him. First of all, that is Satan all day. The enemy is te- is the one telling you God doesn't want anything to do with you. You know, you've messed up so bad. He's not even hear anything that you have to say. And it's like, yeah, the word does tell us that sin separates us from God, right? Uh, I think it's in Isaiah, right, where he says, my arm is not shortened, that it cannot save, right, nor is it that my ear cannot hear, but your sin is in the way. And until you repent for this sin, until you turn away from the sin and change your mind about the sin and stop doing it, change your attitude toward it and recognize it as sin and say, you know what, we're going we gonna to leave this thing alone, like, and actually make the effort Right? Because some things we do have to progress our way out of, right? So it's like until you make the effort to really say, you know what, whatever it takes, God, we're not, I'm not going back here anymore because I don't want to do, you know, I, I have to be in agreement with you that this sin is horrible. It's ugly, right? I'm broken over this. Until we get to that place, of repentance and not that, well, I'm, I'm sorry, and you're going back to it, or <laughs> I'm looking, I'm jumping ahead again, but you're going back to it, then it's like, no. We need to address this first before we can talk about anything else. Because how dare you have the audacity to come to me with your wish list and you don't even want to repent for these things that you really should have died for. But my son took your spot. And it's just like, man, what's going on? I don't understand. It, it seems like everything is, is failing. Uh, what kind of seeds have you been planting? Bad seeds give you bad fruit. What kind of harvest do you want, you know? <laughs> Again, we talked about this stuff, right? So, all that being said, right, going back to, to the review, Moses acted as a mediator for the people because they didn't know the Lord. It, the scripture, as we read, says they were afraid of him. God wants us to revere him, right? Fear him as in revere him, to have a, a respect for him and his standard and his word, right? But he does not want us to be terrified of him. Because what kind of relationship is that? So that being said, right, Christ, as our mediator, made it possible for us to approach the Lord. And so for this, uh, you can refer back to Ephesians. I'm looking at my time. I won't be able to read that. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 through 18. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13. Through 18, right? Um, I think there's also a passage. I have to go back and, and 
in check, right, where it talks about the veil being torn, which I think it might be in that in that passage in Ephesians, about the veil being torn. It's like, yeah, there was this veil, and Moses had to wear a literal veil over his face because he spent so much time with the Lord, he had a glow. And that made the people uncomfortable, so he had to put this veil on. <laughs> And so through Christ, we don't, have, we don't need the veil, right? God wants us closer than close to him, intimately close, closer than close. So he has made it possible for you to go to God yourself and just talk to him. He wants to hear from you. He wants to talk to you, right? But you also have to be prepared for whatever he's going to say. And sometimes I think, that's part of the reason why sometimes we don't come to God because we're scared of what what is God going to say. I was terrified when you know my mom found out that it's like, girl, you've been sitting here, failing all these classes, barely you know going doing anything. Like I was terrified, but it is like, yeah, she was mad, but she still loved me. She still, she still loved me, and she was still trying to help me, like. Again, like, God has that same love for us. He hates sin, but he loves you. <laughs> he loves you. He wants to help you. I, I feel like I have to keep saying that. He wants you to come to him, so come to him. Okay? Now, other things, other points that I want to make and then we close out. Uh, Jesus is also our Perfect high priest. Remember, what was the job of the high priest? We talked about that when we looked at Hebrews, right? He is our living sacrifice, and his blood covers all of us forever. We have a little song, right? The blood never loses its power. His blood never loses its power. There's a reason why they had to keep doing the animal sacrifices, right? He's a living sacrifice. His blood don't lose his power. But we are covered in him forever. Forever. Okay? So, again, like going back, right? I have to say it one more time. This doesn't mean we no longer have to repent. There will always be a need for repentance. For that, you can go to First John 1, and you know, I really, I, I used to just say like verses 8 through 10, specifically those verses, but really, I, you, you start reading through that chapter, the First John chapter 1, it's like, mm, okay. But specifically, you know, you, you, you just, Specifically, 8 through 10, right? First John chapter 1, 8 through, uh, verses 8 through 10. Like, read that. But really read that chapter. <laughs> you will always have to repent for something. Like, if you find yourself in a place, well, I don't, think I, I don't think I have anything to repent for. You need to repent for your pride. You are so prideful that you can't even see your sin. Like, really? You have nothing that you... Need to come to God about nothing at all. I bet if you ask Him, He'll show you. I remember one time I was. <laughs> this is a random story, but I remember one time I was sitting down. It was when I had first started walking in the Lord. I was like, "Well, God, I don't even know what to repent for. Like, what things do I need to repent for?" And when I tell you, baby, He started listing off stuff like rapid fire that I couldn't even keep up. To the point where it was like, uh, well, God, wait, 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 hold on. Wait, you said Like, geez, I got to repent for all that? Oh, my goodness, because he was trying to make it, you know, that he made his point. Like, girl, really? You really think, did you just, okay, just this one thing. Let, let me show you all the areas where you feel it without me. Oh, yeah. 
again, we, we're going to fall short, but the Lord is there to catch us. Right? Now, some two things that we have to remember, though. Okay? One, uh, grace and mercy are not a free pass to sin. Okay? Um, when you are out there willfully sinning and saying stuff like, God knows my heart, oh, you know, grace, his grace and his mercy, that's not grace. Grace is what covers you when you, when you fall short, right? Um, but when you willfully go out there like, oh, well, grace will cover the bill? No, that's not grace. That's you just living foolishly. <laughs> Right, and you gotta be thankful for his mercy even in that because it's like, yeah, again, the audacity. Okay, um, also being like, oh, I'm sorry, but then you're still continuing in the sin, right? You're not truly being uh, repentant, right? You're not truly repenting, that's not mercy either. Okay, so grace is what covers us, but mercy is not getting what you actually deserve. I feel like I shared that with y'all too. When I I literally, Lord, had me study on His mercy, because I was really full of myself that day and feeling some type of way towards God, like you know, man, literally in my heart getting hard, like, you know, the Lord kind of tripping. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I know God is good, but I don't know. I don't know today. <laughs> Lord. And really, you know, and mind you, really needed to repent for something that I did. And after God really got through studying that word and had to hurry up, and go find me a little a little corner in the house, a little space, quiet space in the house, and fell to my knees. And when it came time, when the Lord told me to get up, and suddenly it was like the fear, like literally the fear of God in me, realizing like he could have killed me at any time. I could have spoken a word and said, stop breathing. And that would have been that. And I absolutely would have deserved it. And I just remember feeling paralyzed, like, God, I cannot get up from this ground. Like, literally was like, God, please don't kill me. God, I'm sorry. Please don't kill me. And he just kept telling me to get up and then to give him thanks. And that was the most bewildering, like, confusing moment. Like, what? Give him, give you thanks? I deserved it. He's like, I know, and that's why you're going to thank me. Right? That's why I want you to thank me. Because you should be dead. But because of my son, you yet live, right? And I'm raising you up out of this. I'm calling you out of this thing because I want better for you than this. I don't want to see you perish. So I need you to get up and start giving me some praise. Like, that is, I don't know. If you have not had a humbling moment like that in your life, you might want to, again, it's like check your heart. You really need to check this out. Because you always have something that you should be coming to God about. But then we also should always have something that we should be thankful for because of the fact that it's like, whoo, Lord, I don't deserve none of this at all. Okay. Now, the second thing, and then we're going to go ahead and close out. The law shows us our great need for the Lord, okay? It also is also how we come to know God for ourselves. Again, 
How are you going to talk about what thus does the Lord and you've never read it? How do you know? How do you know it's a sin? How do you know it's not a sin? You haven't read it. You ain't meditated on that. You ain't studied that for yourself. Nothing. All right? So by abiding in his word, it becomes a part of us. And by spending time in his word, we start to take on our father's characteristics. It was something I literally, that same thing that I was studying today, right? And it went back to something else that I learned from another Bible study. You, you'll you be what you see and you become what you behold. That whatever it is that you are admiring, that you're beholding, becomes your God. And you begin to take on the image of whatever idol you have made. And the thing that I learned in the other study that I was looking at this morning is that typically our idols are usually based on self. We tend to make our idols to look like ourselves, right? Oh, here comes the train. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> but if God is the one whom I adore, if he's the one that I'm beholding, and that my focus is on him, right? I start to look like him and talk like him and move like him, and it doesn't happen overnight. It is a process. But the more time I spend with him, the more and more I start to take on his characteristics. Because there's no way you can be in the Father's presence, you know, unless you like a, you know, a Lucifer, right? Uh, from what's come about, oh, here, there, to and fro, seeking who may destroy. But you also notice, right, even when Jesus was teaching, I got to find that passage to y'all. These, these passages be coming up. Even when Jesus was teaching, and he called Satan out. He literally called Satan out. And he said the same thing to him, oh, here, there, to and fro. And so did he stop? Nope. Jesus didn't stop and be like, you get out of here. Say, he just kept on teaching. He looked up again. Satan was gone. Why? Because he can't stand to be in the presence of God. And it's like, careful if you find yourself that way too. Oh, I don't, you know, I got things to do. Okay. Who are you beholding? Who's really your God? Who are you becoming like? Whose traits are you taking on? <laughs> anyway. Oh, so another thing, I don't I don't have it in my review or in my notes, right? But I want to make it clear. Remember also that revelation, right? Interpretation of God's word comes by revelation of Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, He is the one who reveals those things to us in God's word. Again, those are things that take time. That takes you having to sit there. There have been some days where I'm sitting there, I'm reading the passage and it's like nothing. I'm like, okay. Lord, have me go back to it again. Nothing. You know, it's like, he's like, nah, I just want you to marinate for a little bit. I want you to marinate in that. I needed to saturate you. I needed to soak all the way through. I need you to chew on it, think on it all day. Really think about it. Why do you think it's, it's worth that way? Why do you think it is that I would even bring you to this particular verse today? I need you to kind of just dwell there. Just just simmer in that for a minute. Do with it. <laughs> Immerse yourself <laughs> in it. Really, just let it let it let it soak in, and then one day, get to that verse, and all of a sudden it's like, oh wow, it's like a light bulb goes off, you know, and then you study it again, and another it's like again another revelation comes. You're like, oh, I I didn't even realize that. It's like, oh. And another thing, wow, and you know, and that's another thing that I'm noticing. 
and even in that, right, we like again, we like to take credit for things that is God doing that. Like you didn't get that on your own. God gave you that gave you that revelation. But again, it's like I can't get it if I'm not in it. Right? I can't get the revelation from Holy Spirit, right? He can't reveal it to me if I'm not in, in it. So get in it. Whew, all right, y'all. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's pray. <sighs> I don't know what it is. It's just like a constant, constant emphasis, like get in your word. Over and over and over again, get in your word. Get in your word. You were powerless without this word. Get in your word. And stop thinking that you can understand it on your own. Seek me in your word. Stop coming in here like, oh, what, what's in it for me? Come seeking me. Come to know me. Come to this word and wait to hear my voice. It's not about you. You know, I'm going to put my armor on. You're talking about putting your armor on, but you ain't in your word. You're walking around here spiritually naked and hungry. Get in your word. Ooh, okay, y'all. Uh, all right. Like I said, I don't know who it's for. Look, it might be for me next week. You know. <laughs> but if you know it's you, stop playing and get in your word. I don't care if you got to do one verse at a time. Get in your words. I love you. <laughs> All right. Let's go and pray out so, um, Lord God, we just thank you once again for another day. We thank you for this lesson, Lord God. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy, Lord God. More than ever, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. But God, we especially thank you for your word. Um, we thank you that the promise is not broken um, because because we sin. Um, when we fall, God, that you are there to catch us and you just want to heal us. You want to talk to us. You want to restore us back to our rightful position. So right now, God, I pray that whatever things are causing us to stumble or fall, um, that you reveal those things to us, Lord God, and that you would replace it with a desire and a love to serve you, to please you, God, um, with the greater that you have for us. Lord God. I pray that you would help us to see that sin for what it is, sin, um, that it is ugly, that it is a bait, a trap that Satan is trying to use to destroy us, Lord God. And I pray, Lord, that you would continue to fuel, truly give us a passionate, fiery desire for your word. Um, that we would not want to be without your word, Lord God, that we would just continually be in our words, seeking your face and praying and seeking you, Lord God. Um, for those who need to fast, I pray, Lord, that you would move on them, that they would not rest until they do whatever it is that you call them to do. So if they need to fast, if this is a certain assignment or work that they need to get done, whatever it is, Lord God, just continue to move on us do not let us rest until we get it done, Lord God. Uh, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name I pray, thank God, and amen. I almost started laughing because as I was praying that, it's like I could hear that voice like, why she got to pray that in there? Look, you know who you are. <laughs> and don't you know when I pray them days, it'd be applying to me too? Especially that assignment, I'm like, ooh. Like, yeah, you did have me say that. Okay, I'm going to do the assignment, Lord, because I have been dragging my feet. I I have been obedient in that area. Okay. You know, like, as the prayer is coming out, I'm like, dang, that means I ain't going to get no rest either. <laughs> Until I do, it, do that assignment. Right? I'm like, don't think. Oh, don't think. But, yeah, he come from my house first. 
I told y'all, I think I told y'all that he be testing me on every single thing now that we learn in Bible study, even the reviews, every single thing. Whatever I studied that morning, ooh, getting tested. I sure felt my test today. <laughs> oh, my. And to me, finally, toward the end of the day, it was like, okay, Lord, yeah, we're we going to have to talk about that. We are. Okay. And God ain't playing with me either, so, okay. Accountability, it's all everywhere. <laughs> but. That being said, man, seriously, get in, get in your word. I really feel, I don't know, even this month, the prayer, the Lord have me said I was about getting in our word. I don't know what's coming, but whatever it is, we need to be ready for that. And the only way we're going to be prepared is through the word of God. You can't know what's coming or what to prepare for or what you need to do until you get in alignment with him to know what it is that you're supposed to be doing. Again, it's like, oh, I'm I'm going to do and great things in Jesus' name. It's like, okay, what great things? What things exactly are you doing? Because if he ain't told you, you ain't came to him on the, plan, on the battle plan for the war, you know, that's coming, the war that you're in, really. We're always in a spiritual war. So it's like you going out here, no map, no nothing, you just out here. Now you're just wandering, but you're zealous. That's also dangerous. Look, we got to stop. Y'all have... (laughs) Y'all have an amazing weekend. Um, You know, ladies, please be sure to join us on Tuesday for our tea time. Tea Time Tuesday Women's Bible Study. And, of course, you know, y'all can always come and uh, be sure to join us for Sunday service by dialing in. Lord willing, we will be back in our sanctuary um, in his timing, in which y'all support, of course, right? Ministry can't make it (laughs) without any support. So, Um, yeah. But that's it for now. So, ta-ta. Good day. God bless you. Get in your word. (laughs) Bye, y'all.